Hi everybody, welcome back, happy Friday. I'm Katie and this is Katie's Critter Corner. With me today I have the perfect host, Mac. He is one of my four dogs and he's gonna be helping us out with our facts for this Friday. So yes, I said facts. I am bringing you top six things I think as a pet owner or pet parent you need to know about ticks. It is getting warmer and warmer outside, but let's be honest, we hardly had a winter this year. And I think in Pennsylvania, it's becoming one of those things that we see year after year, we hardly have a winter. So let's dive right into the top six things I think you need to know about ticks. So number one, ticks are not actually insects. Yes, I know we all wanna call them bugs, but they're not, they're actually arachnids which I definitely hate because if you know me and you are not tuning in for the first time, you know I absolutely love arachnids and spiders. So uh, unfortunate for the arachnid community, but yes, they are not insects. Number two, ticks require a blood meal to survive, but there have been studies done that show ticks in all life stages, including nymph and larva, adult, they can go up to 20 months without a meal. So yes, these guys are hardy. They can survive out there. It is difficult to kill them off. Number three, ticks do what is called questing. So even if we've had super cold weather and you think that you're safe and there are no ticks out, you only need one warm day and they will do this all through summer as well. They actually crawl onto the tips of blades of grass and low bush. And what they do is they clasp down with their back legs and then they reach forward with their front legs and they kind of just sway back and forth and they wait for one of our pets to walk by them or even a human and they grab on and that's how your pet or you become a host and a meal for a tick. And I know this firsthand because I took Mac out a few years ago in February and it was a beautiful day but it had been consistently cold and snow and even he came back with 32 ticks on him. I was ready to shave him, no hair, but we ended up getting it taken care of and he is on monthly preventatives, so yes. That brings us to our next, number four. Some species of tick prefer a dog. Yes, I know the deer tick. You think that only you can find them on deer, blah, 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 no. They will go on any small mammal they can find, including deer, raccoons, mice, squirrel, chipmunk, dog, you. They will go wherever they can find a host. But that is why we do recommend keeping your pet on preventatives all year round, every 30 days, making sure your pet, your pet is up to date on all vaccines, um, and that you need to also be checking their bedding, checking over your dog. If you know if you're going in any high risk areas, wooded areas, um, definitely be checking over your pet as frequently as you can, especially as the weather stays consistently nice, because that is when we will see it. Now is the time we're gonna start getting positive start popping up. So number five, they need 24 hours to transmit any disease. Now I say that loosely because it can take anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. Usually if your pet is on preventatives, uh, they will die before they reach that period. But definitely if you've had any lapse in preventative medicine for your pet, or even if you have, I know there are weird instances out there, definitely if a tick has been on your pet for 24 to 48 hours, call your veterinarian and we would like to do follow up blood work to make sure that no tick-borne diseases slip through the cracks for your pet. And number six, bringing it to our last one. So this one is crazy to me and we kind of touched on it on one of the earlier facts. Ohio State University actually did a study and it showed that 50% of tick populations that will transmit Lyme disease will die at around 14 degrees, but that's only 50% of them. The rest of them could survive in temperatures of negative seven degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh. 
And how often do we get negative seven degrees Fahrenheit in Pennsylvania? Not very often. Those weather days are becoming very far and few and in between. Which brings me to my last point. Unfortunately, if you're watching this in the state of Pennsylvania or even New York, we are the top states that saw the most cases of Lyme disease. Yeah, I hate that. I hate always having to tell clients and pet parents that. I really wish it wasn't that way, but there are things we can do to help prevent Lyme disease for your pet. Even for you, just be super cautious. They are nasty little things that just keep evolving and they don't ever want to die. So please, please, please be cautious while you're out there. If you have any questions or concerns, always feel free to consult your veterinarian or one of the technicians when you come in for a tech appointment. Absolutely, we are here to help you, guide you in any way, shape or form that we can. Mac was way better than I expected him to be for this. Um, if you're not if you're not already following us on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, please do so. We are on all of those platforms. Um, we look forward to seeing you next Friday. Thanks for joining me. See you next week.